Hi everybody, thank you very much for joining me today. We are going to be programming a maze game using Scratch Online today. Um, so the first thing that you need to do if you haven't done it already is to open up the internet. So I'm going to be using Google Chrome. I've opened up the internet there. I'm just going to type in the Scratch website address, which is scratch.mit.edu and press enter. Now, hopefully you've already got an account in Scratch so you can get signed in. If you need to join Scratch, you may need a parent to help you with this if you are a child. Um, so you might want to just pause this video tutorial right now, get yourself joined up to Scratch and then come back and sign in and press play. Um, so I'm going to be signing in first of all. So I've just put in my username and password and here we are signed in. You may already be signed in and ready to get started, which is fantastic. Um, OK, now, normally when we log into Scratch, you can see your username over at the side here. So mine says Mrs. Diggy and I would click on here and be able to go to my stuff and I can see that everything that I've been working on. Now, what I want you to do first today, though, is where it says search in the middle here, we're going to type in cartwheels and creations. And then you're going to press enter. So let me just give everybody a moment to do that. So it's C-A-R-T-W-H-E-E-L-S, Cartwheels, and A-N-D, and then Creations, C-R-E-A-T-I-O-N-S. So type in Cartwheels and Creations, press enter. Um, if you need to pause at any time, if I'm going too quickly, feel free to do that. Now it will say Projects Nothing Found, but if you click on Studios, you will see that there is a studio called Cartwheels and Creations. This is uh, the studio that I have created, um, A, so that I can share things with you that I've made, um, things that I've made in Scratch, and also so that we can display your lovely projects as well. So you're going to click on Cartwheels and Creations, and you'll see in here we've got some animated greetings cards. These are the ones that were created in the last programming tutorial that I put on YouTube on the channel. Um, so if you haven't already checked that tutorial out and you would like to make an animated greetings card, then um, certainly have a look at that video on our YouTube channel. Um, today we are going to be working on creating a maze challenge game. And this one is my example. So we can all have a look at the example first just to see the kind of thing that we're going to be doing. So we're going to click on maze challenge game. Now, if you can't see the lightning bolt and the monster, it means you clicked on the other one. So just press back up here and then you can choose the correct one. It's called Maze Challenge Game, not the one that says Maze Challenge Backgrounds. Um, once you've got onto Maze Challenge Game, you can see that there's some instructions here. It says click the green flag and then get to the green oval. Use the arrow keys to move your dragon. And then it says at the bottom, see inside to see how this game was programmed. Mrs. Diggy. So I'm going to press the green flag. And I'm going to show you how the game works. So I can move my dragon using the arrows. So I can press up. I can try and go across and you'll see what happens. If oh, Every time you hit the red blocks, it sends you back to the beginning. So you can't walk through them. Um, you can go a little bit down below um, like this. Again, if you hit a lightning bolt, let's see what happens. If the lightning bolt hits me, you see it sends me back to the start. Um, so I'm going to go along carefully. I'm going to avoid the lightning bolt and I'm going to avoid my lobby monster because, again, exactly the same thing happens. It sends you back to the beginning. Um, and I've made it so that my rows are just wide enough for my dragon or some of the rows are just wide enough for the dragon to fit through. This one's a really tricky one because he only just fits. So when you're making your background, try and make it so that it's a little bit tricky for people. Although the first level, you might not want to make it too tricky. And then you'll see what happens once I get to the green oval. It changes and says, you win. Um, click the green flag to play again. So then people could play it again. Now, if it was a multi-level game, when you got to the green oval, instead of it saying you win, it would bring the dragon back to the start. And there would be another maze with maybe faster moving monsters or something like that. But for today, we're just going to be focusing on making one level and a you win page. And then you can always go back and add extra levels yourself afterwards. Um, if you get stuck when you're making your own maze game. So let's say after this tutorial, 
you still haven't quite finished um, and you've got more work to do or you just want to make another level or something and you've forgotten how to make things move, you can always come back to my version, which is here. You can press C inside and then once you press C inside, you can see all of the different programming. So these are all the different blocks that I use to program the dragon. Um, and then if you click on the ghost, these are all the different blocks that I've used to program my ghost um, or my blobby monster, whatever you want to call him. And then if I click here under lightning, these this is these are the blocks that I've used to program the lightning. Um, so you can always come back and have a look inside my project if you want to. But we are going to start from scratch. It's called Scratch. We're going to start from scratch so that you can learn how I made it. Um, because although we can all go into other people's projects and copy how they've done something, you won't fully understand it unless you program it yourself. So we're going to actually start a brand new project today. Um, so you're going to go to File and you're going to press New. And then you've got a completely blank page here. Um, you've got the cat as your main character, but you can delete the cat by just clicking the little cross down here if you want to. So we can delete Sprite 1. Now, the first thing we need to do for our maze game is we need to create the maze. Um, so can anybody guess what it is that we need to click on? Some of you have guessed it. We need to click on backdrops. So down at the bottom here, can you see it says backdrops? Um, and there's an option here to choose a backdrop. And it lets you upload something that you've already got saved on your computer. It lets you have a surprise that they pick for you um, or you can paint your own. And that's what we're going to do today. So I'm going to click on the paint button and you can see that it's brought up the backdrop page. Now, it's really easy to make your own maze background. Um, all you need to do is click on the square or the rectangle tool, which is here. And then you can choose what color you're going to be using. So I might just stick with the purple, but or you can click maybe go for red, blue, whatever you want. I'm going to go for this color. Um, and then all you do, really straightforward, you just start off by clicking and dragging wherever you want to put a box. And I'm going to do this. Now, you don't want to make it impossible. So you do need to have um, areas that your character can get through. But you need to make it a little bit tricky. So I don't think my character can squeeze through this part that I've just done up at the side. Um, but he could, he or she could probably squeeze along the bottom. So try and make it so that your character can get through some parts, but not other parts. And just build up a background like this. I'm going to make it so that my character needs to go from the bottom corner, the bottom left, up to the top right. Um, so I'm going to make it a little bit tricky for my character to get there. Um, I'm going to do some right near the top there. So my character's got to do a little bit of manoeuvring um, to get around. So once you're happy that you've got a maze background and that you think that there's a route for your character um, and you're happy with that, you can then give your backdrop a name. So at the moment it's called backdrop two. I'm going to call it maze to make it easy. So I've called my backdrop maze. Actually it says costume, but yeah, just type in maze there. Um, and then that's basically it. Now, where it says backdrop one up here, we don't actually need that. So if I click backdrop one, I can delete that. I want maze to be my main backdrop. Um, I also need a you win backdrop. So once you've created this maze, as I said before, please pause it. If I'm going a little bit too quickly for you, just press pause on the tutorial um, and then you can start again whenever you, whenever you want to, whenever you want to carry on. Um, so once you've done this maze backdrop and you're happy with it, click on the choose a backdrop again at the bottom. You can actually do it at either side. You can do it here on the left or bottom right. So I'm going to click bottom left this time. Oh, hang on. Ah, I press the uh, ready made backdrop. So I'm just going to go back. I've got to make sure I press the paint one. OK, so I'm so used to going to the ones that they give you. So make sure you hover over it and then go to the paint one. And this time um, I'm going to type in you win. So I'm going to press the text button and in the center here, I'm going to draw, click where I want to put my text and then type you win exclamation mark. And you can use this arrow just to move that around like this. Uh, you can make it bigger if you want to um, by clicking in the corner. So that's my that's my you win background. Um, that's a really, really simple one. Some, you might want to go for a ready-made backdrop and then add you in on the top of it. That's another option because you can edit any of the backdrops that you choose. Um, and again, I'm going to change the name. So at the moment, it's called backdrop one. 
I'm going to put you win as the name of it. Okay, so we've got maze and you win. No, right, once you've done that and you're happy that you've got your two backdrops, you're then ready to create your game and do the programming. So you're then going to click back to code, the code tab up here, because we're ready to do some coding. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pick a character so that we can start coding a character to move in our game. So we're going to go down here. This is where you choose your sprites from. And we're going to press choose a sprite. And you can choose whatever character you would like to be the main character for your game. So I went to fantasy and chose a dragon. But you can choose whatever you want. So maybe this time I will choose Gobo just to be different. So I've chosen Gobo, he's going to be the main character of my game. Um, now at the moment you can see that Gobo is sitting on the you win page and um, I don't really want him to be sitting on the you win page, I want him to be sitting on the maze um, page ready to begin. Um, you'll also notice that Gobo is too big, so I need to make Gobo a little bit smaller. So first of all let's change the backdrop. So we're going to um, Go over here and where it says events, we're going to say when the green flag is clicked. So we just drag it across to here. This is where we do our programming. This is where we say what we want to happen in the game. So we're going to say when the green flag is cl clicked and then we're going to make sure we've got the correct background. Now the background is to do with the way the game looks. So we go to looks and then we're going to say switch backdrop to and you can see there it says you win, but actually we don't want that to start with. We want to choose maze. Remember I called it maze? You might have called it something else. So make sure you click whatever you called it. So I've said when the green flag is clicked, switch backdrop to maze. So let's try that. If I press the green flag where it says go, it's now got the correct backdrop for Gobo. And it's really important you have this. Even if it's already on the maze backdrop, you still want to say when the green flag is clicked, switch backdrop to maze because what will happen is when your character finishes the game they will be on the you win backdrop so then when they play the game again it needs to change back to the maze backdrop so make sure you do put this in even if you're already on the maze backdrop okay so we've done that next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the size of the character because gobo is massive compared to this he won't fit through any of my white gaps so i'm going to go to costumes and you'll see that Gobo is here, um, right in the center. And this is where you can edit your characters. You can change colors and all sorts of things. Um, but please don't worry about that for now. You can always come back and play around with your characters more. We're going to be looking at the size. So over here, it says size 100. So that means 100%. Um, I'm going to make him about probably, or oh, I don't know, maybe just under half the size. So I'm going to go for 40 and see what that looks like. So press 40. And then I'm going to just move him around and try it out. So he doesn't fit through that gap. He fits just about there. He doesn't fit through many of my sideways gaps. I think he's a little bit too big still. So I'm going to change it to 30. Enter. There we go. Now Gobo, he fits through this gap. So he can definitely go up. He can go along here. Um, he'll be all right to come. When, you, when you're going along the bottom, you can normally move down below the screen slightly. So this probably will work. Um, I can always change his size slightly later on if I need to, but I think I'm going to go for 30 for now and see how we get on. And this is where I want him to start in the bottom left. So I've just put him in his starting position. So you can move them around when you're, when you're testing and then put them where you want them to begin. Now, we can come off of costumes now. You can see that, um, well, before I do, you can see that Gobo has two other costumes. Um, if you watch my first tutorial back on the YouTube channel, the one where you make animated greetings cards, um, I do talk a little bit about costume changes, but we're not going to worry about that for now. So we're going to go back to code and we're going to also say that we always want Gobo to start here when the green flag is clicked. So I've already said when the green flag is clicked, switch the backdrop to maze, but we also want to go to motion which is to do with where he's moving to. And we're going to say, go to, and we're going to choose this one. Now yours might not say go to minus 207, minus 149. 
um, it, it will say wherever you've put him. If I move my gobo to here, let's say I wanted him to start up here, you can see over here now, go to has changed to 41 and 152 because that tells you the position he's in. And you can see it here as well. It says that Gobo, the sprite is called Gobo, and he is at number 41 on the x-axis and number 152 on the y-axis. If you've ever done maths before, you might remember doing coordinates and talking about the x and the y-axis. And that's all these numbers are. They're, they're Gobo's coordinates, um, which basically tell you where he is on the screen. Now, I've said that I want him to start down here. I told him to go to minus 207, minus 149. And if I click that green flag, there you go, he pings back down to here. Now, if you're thinking, hang on, what are you talking about? Just watch one more time. If I move Gobo somewhere else, now you can see the coordinates have changed. So it's not what it says in here. It's He's at 210. 103 and it automatically changes it in the instructions because it thinks that's where you might want him to go so it's really clever in scratch that the blocks change depending on where you put your sprite so if you drag drag him around the coordinates change so that you can say go to wherever you've dragged him to it's really clever so let me press the green flag again put him back to where i want to start and that will always happen whenever you press the green green flag to begin the game he will go back to these coordinates that I've put in here. So that's really great. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to move him using the arrow keys. Um, so we're going to choose a different event this time. So instead of when the green flag is clicked, we're going to say when the something key is pressed. So we're going to move this one. So I'm not going to have space. Um, I'm going to have the up arrow. I'm going to say when the up arrow key is pressed, what do you think I want Gobo to do when the up arrow key is pressed? That's right, I want him to move up on my screen. Now, um, to be able to do that, again, you need to have a little bit of an understanding of coordinates. Um, in maths, when we talk about coordinates and the x-axis and the y-axis, the y-axis is the one that goes downwards. And I kind of remember that because I think of a y with a long tail. So the y-axis goes downwards and the x-axis goes across, okay? Um, so, yeah, and if you think of it, a cross, like, it's a bit like an x, so the cross goes across, okay? And the y-axis has a long tail that goes down. So we're going to say when the up arrow key is pressed, we want him to move on the y-axis. We want him to move upwards on the y-axis. So we need to go to motion. And because we're talking about the character moving, and then we're going to be looking for um, change Y by. So can you see where it says change Y by? We're going to choose that. So we're going to say, when the up arrow key is pressed, change Y by 10. And let's just test that out. Watch Gobo now when I press the up arrow. You can see that he moves up. He does move quite a big jump every time. And if you want him to make more delicate movements, you might want to make it so that he only moves five each time. So I could make it so that Gobo just moves five. Let me just click off that and try it. Okay, which is a slightly smaller movement, but if you hold it down, then he moves pretty quickly. Um, to put him back to the beginning, really quick where I remember, I can just press the green flag and it pops him back to the start, which is great. Now we've got to do the opposite of that. So at the moment, it, the character can move up, but if I press down, nothing happens. And that's because I haven't programmed the character to move down yet. So I need to go to events again. And I need to choose when the something key is pressed. This time we're going to say when the down arrow key is pressed. And we're going to look for that motion. We're going to say change Y by. And instead of saying change Y by five, we want him to go down, not up. So we don't, we want to change him by, we're actually going to say minus five or negative five to make the character go down on the axis. Okay. So up is going to be five, down is negative five. So now if you watch my little character, let me just click, you have to click away from um, the blocks just for it to work. So now if I press my little character, he can move down and he can move up. And if I hold my finger on it, they, he moves pretty quickly. Okay, 
So I'm just going to do that. So now we're going to do left and right. Now there is a quick way of doing this, um, rather than keep going to events and keep going to motion. You can right click on a block and then duplicate it, which means copy it. Um, and you can see it just copied that. So I can actually copy it. Um, but obviously I need to change this one because it needs to be changed on this time for left and right. We're going to be moving on the X axis, not the Y axis. So I just chuck that away. You can get rid of them like that. This time I'm going to say when the, uh, let's, let's say right, we want him to move right so that he can get across the screen. Um, we're going to say when the right arrow key is pressed. And then we've got to say what happens um, when he when the right arrow key is pressed. So we're going to say when the right arrow key is pressed and we're going to go to motion again. And this time we're looking for change X because we want him to move along the X axis. Here it is here, change X, drag it along, pop it underneath. Um, and again, I'm going to say five just because I want him to make little steps. So when the right arrow key is pressed, change x by five uh, let's just test that out again so try pressing the right arrow yeah my character moves great um, and then i'm going to duplicate this so right click duplicate and then i'm going to change it to left arrow and what do you think i'm going to do to this number five if i want to make him go back along the x-axis so i want him to go to the left not the right yeah, that's right, minus five or negative five. So pop that in, click away from the block, and then double check it works. So try going left, try going right, try going up, and try going down. When you're happy that you've done that, um, just press the green flag again to put your character back to the start. And um, it might be worth checking that your character can get all the way around your maze as well. Feel free to pause this video if you need to, to try something out and then press play again when you need to, to restart. Your character doesn't have to be able to fit through every gap, as long as there's a clear path from the beginning um, right over to the end. Now the end is going to be this top right hand corner and I haven't so far um, put anything in this corner to make it um, as, a, as a finish point. Um, on the last game I put a green oval, so we'll put something over there in a minute to decide what that's going to be. Um, OK, lovely. Now, next thing we are going to do, we are going to do something called a conditional statement, um, which is a term that is used in programming. Um, a conditional statement basically means that um, when some, something that happens controls something else that happens. So if something happens, then something else happens. So it means that whatever happens is based on a certain condition or a certain thing. So let me give you an example of that. We want to say that if our character hits the purple block or the color purple, that he goes back to the start. So we're going to go to um, events again. We're going to say when the green flag is clicked, because we always want it to happen whenever the green flag is clicked. We want that the green flag is what makes it start. Then we're going to say, uh, we're going to go to control. And can you see that there's a block that says if and then? OK, so we're going to say if touching purple, then go back to the start. We need to fill that in. So um, and we also want that to happen all the time, not just once in the game. We want that to happen whenever he touches purple. So I'm going to use this forever block and put it around this one. You just ping it on the top there. So it says forever, if touching purple, then go back to start, because we always want that to be the case. Um, if, you, if, you, if you put it on there already, and you're saying, oh no, I need to put my forever block in, it still should just slot in there. Um, and you can just pull blocks apart like this as well and put them back together again. So these are the blocks that you need for this conditional statement. Um, now, the color purple is a sensing block um, because we're saying if he senses something, if he if he feels something or if he sees something, we're going to go to sensing and we're going to say, choose this one, touching color. And I know the color is not the color we want at the moment, but that doesn't matter. Just pop that in there. 
So now we're saying when the green flag is clicked, forever, if touching color M, mm, then, and then we'll say go back to the start. So let's just change this color because it's the wrong one. So I'm going to click in the green box there. And then can you see at the bottom there's this little color dropper tool? If you click on this color dropper, you can then select. Can you see that? Look, I've come over here to the maze and I can select the color. So I'm going to click on there. So now I've said forever if touching, and you can see that's the exact same purple, which is perfect. If touching color purple, then, and we've now got to put in the right coordinates because we want him to go back to the start. Okay, so we need to go to motion because it's to do with where he moves to. Um, to make sure I get the exact same coordinates that I started with, because um, you can see they're different at the moment. It says um, go to minus 206, minus 158. And at the beginning, he was at minus 207, minus 149. That's because I've been playing around with him. So if I just press that green flag, that puts him back to the beginning. And then I can come over here and you can see the coordinates match the coordinates that I chose earlier. OK, so they those two match minus 207, minus 149, minus 207, minus 149. Or you can type those in. OK, so now whenever he touches the color purple, he should go back to the beginning. Now, this only works once the green flag is clicked, because we've said when the green flag is clicked, this is what will happen. So before we try it out, let's just click the green flag to activate it. Now I'm going to move and I'm going to walk into one of these purple walls. Oh, and you see it brought him back to the beginning. So you can see that it works. Whenever I try and walk um, past a purple wall, he goes back to the beginning. See what I mean about sneaking around the bottom here? Look, he can he can hide and kind of sneak along the bottom of the screen. You can't go right off the screen, but you can sneak along the bottom. OK, so that's great. So now um, my maze game is looking really, really good. My character can move. Um, if he touches the color purple, he goes back to the beginning. Hopefully you can all see this on my screen. OK, I can actually zoom in a little bit like that. I probably should have done that for you. See, you've got a plus and a minus here. Um, so if you need to do that, you can. You can also reorganize these so you can sort of move them around your screen, neaten them up a little bit. So I'm just making sure you've all caught up with this section. When you're choosing blocks, make sure you look carefully at the colors because it really helps you work out which type of block you need. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that will help you. OK, now, um, the next thing that I think we need to do is we need to add in a um, place that he's got to try and get to. And I should have done that when I created the backdrop, but I kind of forgot. So we're going to go back to the backdrop and just edit that. So over here where it says stage and backdrops, I'm just going to click on there um, where it says two backdrops. And um, sorry. And then, yeah. And then over here, I'm going to click backdrops. And you can see I've got maze and you win. So on this maze backdrop, um, we, we used the rectangle or the square tool last time. This time we're going to choose the circle um, and I'm going to choose a different color. So I'm going to go for green again because I quite like that. So I'm going to go for bright green and I'm just going to click in the corner and I'm going to do myself a green circle. You can have an oval, whatever you want. Um, so that's the destination. That's where my character's got to try and get to. So once you're happy with that backdrop, Oh, just one thing. Normally in Scratch, it saves it for you as you go along. But whenever you've done something new, you can click Save Now up here. If Save Now doesn't appear, that's because it's already saved it for you. But yeah, now it's it's disappeared because it's all up to date. Um, lovely. Once you've done that and you're happy that you've got somewhere for your character to go to, click back on your character so, so we come off the background. And then click on Code. And it's important you've got your character selected. You can see that this is the code for the characters because the character appears in this coding window. OK. Right. Next thing we need to do then, we need to also say that when our character gets to the green dot or the green circle or the green oval or whatever color you've done, we want the background to change to our you win page. So it's very much the same as this one that we've already done. Um, it's a conditional statement again. So we're going to say uh, we're going to say events. We're going to say when the green flag is clicked, because that's like our activation key for the game. 
We're going to say control. We're going to say forever because we always want it to happen whenever the character gets to that point, um, not just once. We're going to say um, forever, if something, then something else. This is our conditional statement. This time it's going to say if touching color, mm, so touching color green in my case, um, then, and instead of go to the beginning, we're going to have switch backdrop. Um, so we're going to choose the color again. Remember, go to sensing, choose touching color. So I'm going to say if touching color, and this isn't the right green for me, so I'm going to click on here, click the dropper tool, and then go along and click there in the corner. So it's now matching the green. So I'm saying forever, if touching color green, then I want to switch the backdrop. So I'm going to, it's, it's about looks, it's to do with the looks on the page. And you can see there's one that says switch backdrop to, and it's already got you in selected, okay? So now I can test that out because that, that one's done. I'm just gonna move it there so you can see it. So if you haven't done that yet, just finish that one off. I could have duplicated this one and then just adjusted it. That was another way of doing it. Uh, some of you might have done that anyway. Okay, so I'm going to test it out now. I'm going to oh, press the green flag to activate it because I've just made a new thing in the game. So I've activated that new thing. Now I can try moving my character around. Oh no, I didn't quite make it. Uh, I'm going to see if this green flag thing works. Um, there is a quick way of doing this actually. Let me just show you how to cheat. <laughs> um, but, but you shouldn't do this when you're playing the game, of course. So if you click on your character, you can drag them across the blocks like that um, and then just test it works. So now move up to the green thing. There we go. And it's switched my backdrop to you win. Remember we said when the green flag is clicked, switch backdrop to maze and go to the beginning. So let's just check that works. Yes. So he's gone back to the beginning. But we do need to tell people that. So when the character gets to the end and it changes to the you win backdrop, we need to tell people that if they want to play the game again, they need to click the green flag. So you could get him to say that or an easier way would be just to edit that backdrop again. Um, so if I click on my um, backdrops down here, oh, hang on, backdrops, stage and backdrops. And then I click on the you win screen. I could add some more text underneath that just says, Let's, yeah, it's in green this time. That's what we'll call. Click the green flag to play again. Um, and remember what I said, you can click this arrow just to move it around um, and you can resize it by clicking in the corner. Oh, so I've, look, I've made that massive now. That didn't work, did it? Let's make it a bit smaller, put it back. Okay, brilliant. Right, I'm happy with that. I'm going to go back to Gobo. Back to code because I want to go back to his code. That's a lot of code that you've done. So if you've made all of those um, bits and pieces, they're called algorithms, sequences of instructions. If you've made all of those algorithms, then you've done really, really well. You've done quite a lot of programming already. And actually, even without the moving monsters, you've already created a game. So if that's enough for you for today and your brain's a little bit frazzled um, because you've done so much coding, then you can always stop here and come back. But I am going to carry on and show you how to put in some moving obstacles. So in my other game, we had some lightning and a monster, like a blobby ghost. Um, so let's let's put in some characters. Now, um, just quickly, I'm going to press this green flag because I want him back over here. Um, so he's gone back to the beginning and my backdrop's changed. I'm now going to choose my first obstacle. So where it says choose a sprite, just click on this add sprite button. And you can choose whatever obstacle you want. So I might go for a ball this time, something simple. But again, have a look through, choose something you fancy. Could be a hamburger, could be anything you like. So um, I'm gonna choose a ball. So quite simple. And I'm going to make my ball start in a certain position. I'm gonna put it up here. Now, don't panic if you're seeing a blank screen in the middle and you're thinking, oh, where's all my coding gone? Um, your coding hasn't disappeared. It's because we're on the ball programming. So this is now showing the programming for the ball. 
If you click back on Gobo or whoever your character was, you can see the programming for them. But we're going to be doing some programming for our first obstacle. So I'm going to click on ball. And a bit like we did with Gobo, you need to say when the green flag is clicked. So we go to events. We're going to say when the green flag is clicked. And we're going to say we want where we want the ball to start. So I'm going to go to motion. And remember the coordinates have already changed to where I've put my ball. If I wanted my ball to start at the bottom, the coordinates, if I move the ball down there, the coordinates change to be the correct coordinates for where the ball is at the moment. But I want my ball to start just here. So I'm going to click on go to and drag that across. So when the green flag is clicked, I've told the ball to go to these coordinates. So that's great. So even if I put my ball here, as soon as I click the green flag, it goes back to where it's supposed to be. Now, this is the clever part. This is how we make our ball move somewhere. We're going to make it glide. So first of all, think where is it going to glide to? Mine's just going to go straight down and back up, but yours could go across and back up. It's up to you. So I'm going to drag it to where I want it to go. Mine's going to go roughly down below. And I'm going to, instead of saying go to, because then it kind of pings to that position, I'm going to say glide, um, and I'm going to cho choose the coordinates where it is now. I've, I've selected where I want it to glide to, and the coordinates have adjusted. So I'm going to choose that, and I'm going to put this glide in here. So now, if I click my green flag, you can see it glides down. It, gl it did quite a quick glide there, see? Woo, it does it in one second. If you wanted it to move slower, you say glide in three seconds. Woo, it's quite slow now. If you wanted it to go fast, you could make it something like 0.5 seconds. That's half a second. So glide in 0.5 seconds, Woo, quite fast. That was a weird noise I made there. Okay, so now my ball um, glides down. I might leave it fast because it's hard. Um, I want it to pause at the bottom and then I want it to glide back to the top again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to control. I'm going to choose weight. Just make it wait for one second, that might work. And then I'm going to go back to motion and I'm going to tell it to glide back to the top. Now, I, I know what these top coordinates are. I want it to be the ones where it started. It's these ones, minus 115, minus 158. Um, and if I move the ball back to the top, I probably won't get the exact coordinates. Um, so I'll just adjust those in a minute. I'm going to click this one, glide, and it says 139159. I didn't move it to exactly the same place. So I can change that if I want, minus 115. And oh, nearly, let 15. Nine, I put that's one five eight, right? So now where it started and where it glides to when it comes back up are exactly the same. Watch it glide now. Let's click the green flag, it goes down, wait, and glides up. And you can see it goes down faster than it comes back up because I said glide down in 0 0.5 seconds but glide up in one second. Um, so yeah, you can control how quickly or slowly you want it to move now. I want it to keep doing that. I don't want it to just do it once and then stop, which is all it's going to do. It's just going to stop there. So how do I make it so that the ball keeps repeating that? And does anybody have any ideas? That's right. What we need to do, we need to click on control and we need to use a forever block. And we're just going to pop that in there. So now we're saying when the green flag is clicked, it goes to the coordinates at the beginning, but then it forever glides. It glides to here, then it waits, then it glides back to here. And then I need to put in another little wait block because I also want it to wait at the top. So I'm going to go to control again and just put in a wait. Um, if I pull this off just for a minute so you can look at it on its own, you can now see that um, it says glide to the bottom, wait, glide to the top, wait. And then because it's forever, it'll do it again. Glide to the bottom, wait, glide to the top, wait. 
and let me pop that back on again because it, it doesn't work on its own if it's just floating like that um it won't actually work because there's no there's no activator or event attached to the top of it so it doesn't know when to do it um so we need to pop it on here so that we can make it happen automatically you can try it out by clicking on it it will do it if you click on it but you need to actually put it on here to make it happen automatically so now let me just stop it with this stop button if i press the green flag it should go to the top of my screen to start with and then it should do this little sequence that we've set up there we go so now i've already set up my first obstacle um, I'm going to do my second obstacle now. So I'm going to click on new sprite. And you can obviously put as many obstacles as you want to have. I think I'm going to go for a random bat this time. Why not? I'm going to put my bat over here. My bat's very big. Remember, if you want to resize your characters, you can. Um, I'm actually going to resize this bat because my, my character Gobo has to go up this bit here, I think, to get to the green ball. So actually with my bat here, it makes it impossible. So do think about where you're putting your characters because you've still got to make it possible for your um, character to be able to win the game. So I'm going to make my bat smaller. So I'm going to click on his costume and I'm going to um, just go down to here where it says size. And I'm going to change his size to, let's try 30, see what that looks like. Yes, yeah, so now I've got a little bat, which is what I want. Um, but you can have, or maybe, should we go a little bit bigger, actually? Let's go for 50, because he does look tiny. 50, there we go. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm just going to move him along a bit, and then that means Gobo can still fit in this gap. Right. Okay, so I'm going back to his code now. This is the code for my bat. You can see the bats in the corner. Now, there's a quick way of doing this. We don't have to do it completely from scratch. We can go to our ball, and you can take the coding for your ball and drag it onto your bat. So I drag it all the way down here and let go of it on top of the bat. And it's still, now, now you see I'm back on the ball. It's still in my ball um, programming screen here in the middle. If I click onto the bat, it's also on here. So that copied it for us onto the bats page. Now, we don't want my bat to start in the same place as my ball, because watch what happens now if I click the green flag again. <laughs> the bat and the ball are moving together because they have exactly the same programming. So I do need to change it now. So I'm going to press stop. Um, I'm just going to pull this off the bottom. Now, we need some different go-to coordinates for the bat. So I want my bat to start at the bottom here. And let's actually just to the left a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go to motion. I'm going to choose some different go to coordinates. That's where he is now. So choose that and get rid of that one. OK, so that's where he's going to start. And then where he's going to glide to is also going to be different. Um, so we can get rid of that glide and I'm going to make him glide to the top. Ooh, there we go. Put him at the top where I want him to glide to. And then I can choose this one glide to here. OK, then wait. And then I want him to I can just um, put this in myself. Um, I want him to glide to where he started. So you can see that the bat started at 10 minus 149, which was down at the bottom. Then he glides to 3144, which is where he is now. You can see that down here. And then I want him to glide back to 10 minus 149. If this is really tricky for you and you're not really understanding the coordinates, um, you can always use my coordinates if you want to, um, or just ask a parent to help you with this part if you're a child doing it by yourself. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. So let's just try that out. Now, hopefully my bat is, there we go. So my ball's doing one thing and my bat's doing another thing. So my bat's on a different speed to my ball my bat's going one seconds up and down my ball moves a bit quicker when it goes down I might just make my ball super quick going up and down so let's make it 0.5 for both 0.5 there we go let's try that out shall we green flag so now my ball goes quickly in both directions Ooh, there we go look at that 
and my back goes more slowly. I quite like that though. Should I try it out now with Gobo? So I'm going to press the green flag to start. You can press stop to make everything stop. Press your green flag to start, make sure it's all working, and then you can test it out. So da -da 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 -da. now the only thing I haven't programmed yet is that when Gobo hits my ball, does anything happen? Nope. When Gobo hits my bat, does anything happen? Nope. So they're not really obstacles at the moment, are they? So what we need to do, we need to program it so that um, using another conditional statement. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to say when the green flag is clicked. Actually, let's go back to Gobo to do this. Sorry, not on the ball or the bats, because we want to say when Gobo hits the ball, not when the ball hits Gobo. OK, so we're going to click on Gobo and we are going to be putting in a conditional statement. We've already got a couple of conditional statements here um, to do with if he's touching a colour, then something happens. This time, um, we're going to change it slightly. Let's use the duplicate to be quick. So right click on this conditional statement, press duplicate, and you get a second one. Pull it down and click to let go of it. So this time, we're going to say when the green flag is clicked, forever if, and instead of touching colour, we're going to take that sensing block out. Just chuck it over here to the side. It disappears. We're going to go to sensing. And if you have a look here, can you see where it says touching mouse pointer? We're not going to have mouse pointer. We're going to change that arrow to, and you're going to pick whatever your obstacle is called. So my obstacle is called ball. So I'm going to click ball. So now I can use this and I can say, Forever, if touching the ball, then I want him to go to the beginning. And we know that's the beginning coordinates because we've already programmed that when we did when we did the touching the color purple one. And I can test this now. So press the green flag to activate it. And now let's try it out. If he touches the ball, let's check he goes to the beginning. Hey, yes, he does. So really important. Every time you do a new bit of code, make sure you just try it out. Make sure it works. If it doesn't work, just have a look at it carefully and think, what is it that I need to change? What didn't work about my coding? This is something that all programmers have to learn to do, and it's called debugging. So you have to, it sounds funny, doesn't it? You have to debug your code, work out what's wrong with your code and correct it. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't work the first time. One of the really fun things about programming is trying different things out for yourself. So we're going to do the same thing for the bat now. Um, I'm just going to right click and duplicate. Oops, I didn't press right click there. Let's try that again. Right click, duplicate, pull it along here, click. Um, this time, all I need to do is change it so that it says if touching and I move the ball, click on there and change it from ball to bat. There we go. So now it says forever if touching bat, then go back to the beginning coordinates. So I've now got four conditional statements. OK, so there's four different conditions that make him go back to the start. And those conditions are touching the color purple, touching the color green, touching the ball or touching the bat. All of those four conditions make him react, make him do something, um, which in this case is go back to the start. So my game is now pretty much finished, which is awesome. I'm really happy about that. Um, I'm going to show you how you add your project to the Cartwheels and Creations Studio now, because if you've finished it, you might want to share it with everybody else that's been doing this tutorial today. Um, and you can all have a look at each other's and play each other's, which is really super fun. Um, make sure before you do um, this next step that you just test your game to make sure it all works. It should do, um, but just double check that it does. Once you've done that, give your game a name. So at the moment, mine is called Untitled 40. But you might want to call it something like maze challenge or um, get to, shall we, I might call it get to the circle. <laughs> really obvious name. So choose something that you want to call it, whatever you like, doesn't matter. You can always even use the same name as me. And then when you press share, that means that you're sharing it with the whole of the Scratch community. So it means that anybody on the Internet could actually have a go at your game or anybody that's on Scratch anyway, as long as they knew how to find it. But every project has a really long code. If you look at the top here, this code at the top, this is the code for getting to this game. So it's not that easy for people to find your game and play it. Um, but you could always give them the code if you wanted them to be able to. So I've called it Get to the Circle. 
I'm going to press, um, oh, save now first, like that. So I've just saved it. And I'm going to press share. Now that shares it with um, the Scratch community. And it also means other people can remix it. One of the great things about Scratch is that you can remix other people's projects um, and make them even better. Um, and it's something that you agree to do as a scratcher, somebody that uses Scratch, you agree that anything you share is available for anybody to use. So it's a really nice thing to do. Um, but you do have to remember that when you're using other people's projects or playing or, or sharing things that you've created, that you have to make them appropriate for everybody because any age or um, people from all different backgrounds will be playing this game. So make sure that whatever you create is suitable. Um, so in the instructions, you can write how to use your game. So I could put use the arrows to get to the green circle. I've typed that quite quickly. You can always come back and do this. Um, notes and credits. So if you've used somebody else's project, you could say, oh, thank you to whoever you've used um, for the great idea, something like that. Um, or if you'd use somebody else's artwork in the background or something like that, you would say um, background photography by so-and-so or whatever. OK, so that's just where you can add in extra notes and credits. Um, or you could just put have fun, anything you like, really, um, or nothing. Just leave it as it is. Once you've done that, can you see at the bottom it says add to studio? So you can actually add it onto a studio. So if when I click that, it actually comes up automatically. Um, with my different studios. Um, you won't have the Cartwheels and Creations Studio as an option. So there's a different way that you have to do it. You have to go um, up to the search bar at the top, type in Cartwheels and Creations. It'll probably come up where you typed it earlier. Um, so do that first. Go like this, enter, click on Studios, click on Cartwheels and Creations. And then can you say what, see where it says Add Projects? Um, because I've said allow anyone to add projects, you can click on add projects um, and then um, you can add in your projects. See at the bottom here, it's got all these projects. So these are all ones that I've made. So if I want to add this one, go get to the circle, I just click on add. Hey, and it's just popped up into the studio. Um, or you could paste in the address of a project that you've made into there. Um, remember, I told you the address appears at the beginning. And if you want to come back to the Cartwheels and Creations Studio, um, this is another way you can find it by using this code. Um, and you can share the codes from the web address bar with friends and family if you want to share projects with them um, so they can go on Scratch and have a look. So, yeah, that's great. And this Get to the Circle game, as well as being here, it's also in My Stuff. So I can go to My Stuff. You can see already... Um, that it's been shared. Um, you can see it's been viewed once. Um, if you ever decide, actually, I don't really want it to be shared, you can press unshare. Um, but if you want to add it to a studio that you own, you click here and it gives you the option. Um, if you want to work on it again, you can click back on see inside. Um, so yeah, lots of different options there. Um, we will be doing another programming tutorial next Tuesday at the same time. So if you've enjoyed today and you've managed to create a, a game, or even if you haven't managed to do it, but you want to carry on developing your programming skills, make sure you come along again next Tuesday um, or anytime because the um, tutorials will be available on YouTube after they've premiered. So this is a premiere today. You are the first people to be watching this um, video if you're watching it um, on Tuesday uh, the 21st of April um, but if you're watching it after that that's absolutely fine as well um, hope you've enjoyed it lovely to see you all today thank you very much for coming please uh, drop me an email um, cartwheelsandcreations at gmail.com if you have any questions and make sure you check out our channel for lots of other great videos and fun things to do okay bye